I'm Lee Spencer with the Racing Boys, and I am talking to Tanner Thorson. And I got to say, uh, last time I saw you was in Las Vegas, and then next thing I know, you're laid up in a hospital bed. Can you kind of take everybody through what happened in that short period of time between uh, Las Vegas when you were, you know, having fun and and racing with World of Outlaws, and next thing we know that. Um, you had a very difficult ride home. Yeah, um, you know, we were there running with the World of Outlaws, and then I stayed uh, to watch the NASCAR race and um, was on my way home. It was about an eight-hour drive, and uh, we were, you know, I was trekking along trying to trying to get to actually to Sacramento by 8.30 and, and then go run, uh, go up to Red Bluff, California to a go-kart test day, and uh, you know, I was driving through Modesto, and I uh, the traffic started to slow down, and a car, the uh, milk truck actually dodged in front of me, and by the time he got in front of me, everybody was locking the brakes up, and there was no time to really slow down. So, um, got in a wreck, and you know, lucky to be here. There was speculation that you might have fallen asleep at the wheel, but from what you said to us, that's certainly not the case. No, you know, I I've told multiple people this I think if I would have fallen asleep I don't think I would have been here um you know by the way the truck went up in flames and stuff I was conscious the whole time um I remember everything from hitting to getting out and uh walking away and going to the ambulance and going to the hospital so um I tried to get that through through most of everybody's head that like if I was if I would have fallen asleep I don't think I would have been here um, so you ended up in the hospital and then, um, what were the extent of your injuries at that time? Um, they knew my arm was broke, um, and they knew something was wrong with my foot. And, uh, you know, I think they could tell something was wrong with my, with my lungs, just kind of my short breasts and stuff. And, um, finally got a CAT scan and found out that my arm was broke and you know I lost a little bit of muscle in my left arm just because of the muscle sticking out from the from the break of the arm um, and getting dirty while I was getting out of the truck and uh, so they uh, they actually had to remove a little bit of muscle in my arm and uh, they ended up plating my arm and then they had to put rods and plates in my foot to kind of reconstruct my foot I mean, that, that just sounds absolutely brutal, and you haven't even, well, first of all, when did you get home from the hospital? I got home about a week and a half ago, yeah. And you mentioned to me earlier that you were staying close to the hospital and close to that same elevation due to the damage that was done to your lungs. Yeah, um, so I punctured both lungs and had one lung that was collapsed, Um so I actually had a chest tube in, and they were trying to, you know, inflate my lung, and they just kind of wanted me to stay close for about two weeks and just keep keep the same elevation just so I didn't, you know, ruin, ruin basically, and have to go get another chest tube. Um, so I stayed at my uncle's house in, uh, in, by Marysville, California, and stayed there for a couple of weeks, and then went back down and got a checkup, and they gave me the AOK to go home, and um, I think the elevation by the, at the hospital is around 72 feet and where I live is about 5,000 feet. So, um, they're kind of worried about that. Um, you, what you sound, what it, what it sounds like you've gone through sounds ex- excruciating. Um, you think just because of the fact that you're so young, it has helped you recover as quickly as you have. I mean, somebody who you know, wasn't 20 something. It, it, it sounds like the recovery period would have been a lot longer from the point of at least just getting home from the hospital, because from what you have said, you haven't even been able to start, um, rehabilitation yet. Yeah. You know, I think the age is a lot of it and just being healthy. Um, you know, I think they said that you know, the, the healthier you are, obviously, the, the faster your bones are going to grow and and and, re, and rebuild. And uh, I think that's kind of the big thing that has helped me in, in, in getting better is just being healthy and uh, and, and fit. Um, you know, obviously, 
being race car drivers, you I feel like you're a lot more fit than fit than most people out there. So I think that's all helped in in the process of getting better. And you know, the doctors got me on a lot of vitamins. Um, my doctor's a vitamin freak, so I think that's you know helped me a lot as well. Did you, but you know, before the accident, were you working out to any degree? I know when you're 20 years old, you don't <clears> think you have to work out. I mean, mo- you know, you don't see a lot of of drivers really getting into it until a they need to work out to be competitive against other guys coming in, or um, you know, other guys either coming in or other guys. Um, other guys, um, I don't know, competing for their rides, I guess I would say. So uh, somewhere in between that, were you working out just, you know, getting prepared for all the racing that you do? Um, you know, I, I'd i like to say yes, but to be honest, I, I, I used to work out quite a bit back, you know, four or five years ago before I kind of moved out to the Indiana area and went and raced. And, uh, you know, i for what I did, you know, I, I felt like obviously building muscle and stuff in your arms is obviously good. And I started feeling like I was getting more tired while racing and I kind of did some research and obviously, you know, it takes more energy to move more muscle. So, you know, it's good to be cut and fit, but I just, I kind of quit doing that. And, uh, you know, I feel like it's, if anything, it's helped me, you know, I got really good cardio and, you know, I, I'm always on the go and, and, and working in the shop and stuff, and I kind of didn't really have time to go to the gym in the first place. So, um, obviously now it's going to change. So, as soon as I'm able to able to walk again on my foot, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to be in the gym a lot, just trying to, you know, recover from what I've what I've missed over these last few months. And you think your re- rehab uh, will start in what about two weeks, maybe uh, optimistically? Uh-huh. I'm obviously hoping as soon as I can, but uh, I think probably more of a month, month and a half will be more of a more of a, a better shot um, of getting that in. Wow, um, I, I'm just I'm just still kind of blown away. I mean, I'm just so thrilled you're here, but I'm like, um, you know, even somebody as young as you, it just sounds like the. Um, you know, the injuries were, were a lot worse than earlier indicated. Um, how, what, what is, you know, right now, what is a day in the life of of Tanner Thorson look like? Um, nothing really. I, uh, I just kind of sit around and, and watch movies and and play Xbox and stuff, um, (laughs) stuff I've never really done before in my life. Um, I've always been on the go and, and like I said, I, I, I told you before, I've all, I kind of went to bed around two, three in, at, in the morning and, and woke up at seven and eight. So, um, and then back at the shop. So I've never really sat around. So it's in a way, I think it might be all right, you know, and kind of helping me, um, obviously heal. You want rest and stuff to heal and it might have, might be healing some stuff that's been wrong in in the, before the accident, you know? So, uh, just kind of sitting around watching movies, hanging out with the family, um, trying to get out as much as I can. Um, I haven't been with my family in, you know, four, um, about six and a half years, um, ever since I moved back to Indiana. So, you know, getting back here and catching up and, you know, kind of living with them again, obviously. And, um, they got to take care of me (laughs) obviously as much as they can. So, um, just kind of, you know, hanging around and, I got to go meet some friends and friends from um, high school, and so it's been it's been good and relaxing, kind of keeping my mind off of this stuff. But in the end, it kind of kind of irritating. I would think you're watching a lot of Dirt Vision too, right about now. Yeah, I've watched every single race they've had, and it you know it it's nice um, to obviously have those those connections and ways to watch races and stuff, but it also sucks in the same way, knowing that, you know, I can, uh, I should be there. Let's, let's put it that way. I should be racing. And, you know, I watched the power out races here in Oklahoma and it just killed me not being there. So, um, but my health's more important than anything. So. Well, you are such a hands-on guy. I mean, I can I, I can see where this would be driving you nuts because when you're not racing cars, you're working on cars, and um, you know, just 
kind of interested to see, you know, what what that might look like. Um, how, you know, you talked about spending time with friends. Were they coming to see you? Are you mobile at all? Or what's, um, you know, are, are you homebound? Or what's, you know, what's, what's your, <laughs> how are you getting around right now? Well, walking and, and getting around the house, I got this little knee scooter. Um, and when I get out, I can, you know, get on the knee scooter and got one arm and one leg. So kind of make that work. And then, uh, you know, yeah, I've got some buddies and friends that come, have come and seen me. And then I also, you know, my family takes me to, to their places as well. And if I need to get out and go to the store, I, you know, they take me and, uh, kind of waiting to find out where my dad's been hiding the keys, uh, try to get out and get by myself <laughs> a little bit. So, um, but you know, it's, it's been good. My family and, and all my friends and I got a great support group behind me that have, you know, kind of been helping me get through this a lot easier. And it's, uh, not easy for me, like you said, to, you know, hands on. And I, you know, I'm, I've do nothing else besides work on the race car and race. So, you know, and Lee, my crew chief, he, uh, you know, he's pretty bummed as well. And it makes, it makes it a little bit harder on me as well. Um, knowing that he's, or just like me and wishing we were racing as well. Um, but, you know, we were working, we had a lot of things in the works to for this midget team and um, for it to be put on a hold uh, kind of makes me a little devastated. So we've been working really hard, and but, you know, it kind of gives us a little bit of time right now to um, kind of maybe regroup a little bit after Chili Bowl in Florida and, you know, try to get our stuff a little bit better and, and find new things that we can get better. Um, you know, we've, we've got a lot of new things in a short amount of time to, that we've found and, and been working on. And, uh, you know, maybe we have a little bit more time to, to look at those things a little bit more to see if we can get more out of them. Well, I know the 3C was a formidable, formidable operation, and you guys were really starting to pick up C, speed. And I can see where Lee might get a little stir crazy because, you know, he works as diligently as you do. But I also have to believe that there have been a lot of well wishes from the motorsport community headed your towards your way. Have you felt the outpouring of, of you know, love and, and support? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think the motorsports world – racing world in general is, you know, the best world and best family you can have. Um, it's been, uh, it's been unreal. Like the amount of support that I've seen and, and, you know, had from just the racing world in general. And then, you know, even people, you know, that are in the racing world kind of that just kind of come along a post of mine or post of somebody tweeting that, you know, are giving me well wishes. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's a big thing in this racing world that helps, you know, people like me and people that, you know, are hurt or trying to get better, um, come back. So, um, like I said before in a couple of interviews, like I'll be back. There's no two ways about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back even harder. I've got a, got a fire underneath my butt right now. That's trying to get me up right now to come back, but, uh, it'll, it'll time will, time will tell and it'll be better. Oh, it's almost April, so if we're looking another month for, you know, to start rehab, and I, I'm guessing you're going to be doing that for four to six weeks, when is the earliest you could possibly get back in a car? Not that I'm pushing you, but when, you know, what date have you set out there so at least there is a goal in mind? Yeah, I don't know if anybody can push me more than myself. Um, I, uh, I've been, you know, kind of, this is already probably pushing it a little bit too much, but, uh, told my doctors and everybody that I'm like, Hey, I got a race. This is my living and this is how I make my money. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, trying to get back for the August for August, um, the Eldora truck race. And I talked to my manager a little bit and, you know, that's kind of a race I want to make my comeback race. I'd, I'd like to. And, uh, so I think that's kind of the race I'm, I'm shooting for. If it happens before then, that's great. If it happens a little bit after, I understand, uh, you know, obviously my health is a lot more important than, than, uh, than getting back in a race car and getting hurt again. So I got to make sure I'm a hundred percent before I can, uh, obviously get back in the car. Well, considering you're, you're still a, a youthful 20 something, I think you have plenty of time to do that. And, 
Um, I would also hope that the BC 39 might be something on your schedule as well, if you're ready by then. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's a race I missed last year. We had a pretty big race in California on the same date and, uh, it was a race I missed and race I wanted to be at so bad. And I almost had a red eye flight, but it just wasn't going to work right. So, uh, um, the race I'm obviously going to try to make again. Um, I don't know the exact dates, but I know it's, it's in that time period of the Eldora truck race. So I think it's, uh, I think it's doable for sure. Well, listen, we really appreciate your time today and can't wait to see you and, uh, wish the West Coast swing wasn't over or we'd probably pop up there and surprise you. <laughs> we know you have a, a long road back and, um, you know, look forward to seeing you at the racetrack soon and, you know, or at least as soon as you can get ready to, uh, you know, get back a hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on. And, you know, I'm obviously, um, just cause I'm not racing doesn't mean I won't be at the racetrack. You know, I've been talking with Zach Dom quite a bit, um, here in the last couple of weeks about just coming out and hanging out with him. And, uh, you know, that's something that I like to do. I, Zach Dom's a good buddy of mine and I think it'd be cool to, to get out there and be able to come hang out with them and, and get, be in the racing world still, you know. Well, if you're going to hang out with anybody, you know, the, Zach is the life of the party. And so <laughs> I, I would think that that would be a great place to start. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a good dude for sure. All right, man. Well, listen, we appreciate your time and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Yep. Thank you.